Have you ever wondered if we are the only intelligent life in the universe, or if there could be others who have influenced our history? Let's take a step back in time, way back, to the ancient land of Mesopotamia, where one of the earliest civilizations was born. Here, a mysterious group of deities known as the Anunnaki were a central part of the mythology. The Anunnaki, whose name translates to those of royal blood or princely offspring, are said to have descended from the heavens and their origins are deeply rooted in ancient Sumerian texts. But who were these celestial beings? And what role did they play in our history? The answers to these questions have been the subject of much debate and speculation. Some believe that the Anunnaki were simply mythical figures conjured by our ancestors to explain the mysteries of the universe. Others, however, propose a more sensational theory that these divine beings were, in fact, extraterrestrial life forms with advanced technologies who played a significant role in shaping early human civilizations. This theory, known as the ancient astronaut theory, suggests that these otherworldly visitors helped our ancestors build monumental structures, develop advanced technologies, and even influenced our genetic makeup. It's a theory that, while controversial, has captivated the imagination of many. But the Anunnaki are not just a part of ancient astronaut theories. They have been depicted in numerous artifacts, their images etched into stone tablets and carvings, their stories woven into the fabric of ancient cultures. Their influence, real or imagined, has left an indelible mark on our history. In the end, the truth about the Anunnaki remains shrouded in mystery. Scholars continue to debate their existence, their influence, and their legacy. But one thing is clear. The Anunnaki, whether they were gods, aliens, or simply figments of our ancestors' imaginations, have given us a fascinating puzzle to solve. So are you ready to journey into the past, to explore the stars, and to unravel the secrets of the Anunnaki? Let's delve into the enigmatic world of the Anunnaki and explore the mysteries that have baffled scholars for centuries. The Anunnaki, a term which means those of royal blood, originate from ancient Mesopotamian mythology. They hail from a time when stories were the primary form of knowledge transmission, where tales of gods and goddesses were woven into the very fabric of civilization. In the heart of the ancient Near East, the cradle of civilization, the Sumerians spun tales of the Anunnaki. These were not mere stories, but rather intricate narratives that painted a vibrant picture of a pantheon of powerful deities. The Anunnaki were depicted as divine beings who descended from the heavens, their names etched in cuneiform on clay tablets, their images immortalized in intricate carvings and reliefs. As time passed, the lore of the Anunnaki permeated into Akkadian, Assyrian, and Babylonian mythology. Each culture added its own unique flavor to the Anunnaki narrative, shaping and reshaping their identities, roles, and mythologies. Despite the ebb and flow of empires, the Anunnaki remained a constant, their presence deeply rooted in the collective psyche of these ancient societies. Their descriptions in ancient artifacts and texts are fascinating. The Anunnaki were often portrayed as humanoid, yet distinctively divine, their imposing stature symbolizing their power and authority. They were seen as the orchestrators of fate, the shapers of destinies, and the givers of civilization. They were the ones who bestowed kingship, who taught mankind the art of civilization, from law to agriculture, from science to arts. But beneath the reverence and the awe, mysteries abound. Who were the Anunnaki, really? Were they merely figments of ancient imagination, or were they something more? Were they, as some propose, extraterrestrial beings who played a crucial role in the genesis of human civilization? Or were they symbolic representations of natural forces and human experiences? The answers remain elusive, shrouded in the mists of time. The Anunnaki were revered as powerful deities, but their true nature remains a subject of intense debate among scholars. As we delve deeper into their history, 
we find more questions than answers, inviting us on a journey through time, myth, and mystery. According to some theories, the Anunnaki played a significant role in the development of human civilization. These theories suggest that the Anunnaki, beings from ancient Mesopotamian mythology, had a profound influence on the birth and progression of human societies. One of the most fascinating theories is the idea that the Anunnaki genetically engineered humans. Proponents of this theory argue that the Anunnaki, with their advanced knowledge and technology, created humankind as we know it today. They suggest that the Anunnaki manipulated the genetic structure of early hominids to produce the modern human. It's a bold claim, no doubt, but one that has sparked considerable interest and debate. An intriguing aspect of these theories is the archaeological evidence that some believe supports them. For instance, ancient Sumerian texts and artifacts depict beings with features and abilities beyond the ordinary. These depictions, some argue, represent the Anunnaki and their interactions with early humans. Others point to the complexity and sophistication of early human civilizations, suggesting that such rapid progress could only have been possible with external help. However, it's crucial to remember that these interpretations are not universally accepted. Many historians and archaeologists argue that the supposed evidence can be explained through conventional historical and archaeological methods. They contend that the genetic engineering theory and the idea of the Anunnaki's involvement in human civilization are speculative at best. Despite the controversy, these theories have captivated the imaginations of many. They've spurred countless debates and investigations, pushing us to question and rethink our understanding of human history. They invite us to explore the realm of possibilities, no matter how far-fetched they may seem. The Anunnaki, whether real or mythological, serve as a reminder of the mysteries that still surround our past. They symbolize our quest for knowledge and our desire to uncover the truths hidden in the annals of time. While these theories are controversial, they raise intriguing questions about our understanding of human history. Could ancient civilizations have developed advanced technologies with the help of extraterrestrial beings? A question that sparks our curiosity as we delve into the advanced technologies of the Anunnaki. The Anunnaki were not just celestial beings of ancient lore. They were purportedly pioneers of advanced technologies far beyond the scope of human understanding during their era. These technologies ranged from sophisticated knowledge of astronomy to the manipulation of genetic material and their influence echoes in the enigmatic structures that have stood the test of time. The Anunnaki's knowledge of the cosmos was said to be so advanced that they could plot celestial courses and predict cosmic events with astonishing precision. Some theorists propose that they use this celestial knowledge to align ancient structures like the pyramids with specific star systems a feat that would require a level of technological advancement and mathematical understanding far beyond the scope of the era. But their technological prowess didn't stop at the stars. The Anunnaki were also said to have dabbled in the very fabric of life itself. Genetic engineering, the manipulation and combination of DNA sequences, is often attributed to these ancient beings. According to some theories, the Anunnaki used this knowledge to alter primitive human DNA, accelerating our evolution and instilling within us the seeds of civilization. The mystery surrounding ancient structures like the pyramids deepens when we consider the possibility of advanced technology. How could such colossal monuments with such intricate detailing be constructed with primitive tools and methods? Some suggest that these structures are testament to the Anunnaki's advanced technologies, a physical manifestation of their knowledge and prowess, etched into the very stone of our planet. As we explore these theories, we must remember that they are just that, theories. But they provoke us to question and reevaluate our understanding of our own history. Perhaps these theories serve as a reminder that technological progress isn't linear, but a complex interplay of knowledge, understanding, 
and sometimes mystery. These theories challenge our conventional understanding of technological progress. As we delve deeper into the mysteries of the Anunnaki, we continue to uncover more questions than answers. But isn't that the very essence of exploration? The Anunnaki theories have sparked numerous debates and controversies among scholars. The very existence of these celestial beings has been the subject of intense scrutiny, with some scholars dismissing the Anunnaki as mere figments of ancient Sumerian imagination, while others argue for their historical reality. The interpretation of ancient Sumerian texts is another hotbed of controversy. Some researchers claim these texts describe advanced technologies and knowledge possessed by the Anunnaki, suggesting they could have been extraterrestrial beings or an advanced human civilization. Others, however, argue these interpretations are far-fetched, reading too much into metaphorical and mythical language. The Anunnaki's alleged influence on early human civilizations is also a point of contention. Theories range from the Anunnaki being the architects of monumental structures like the pyramids to them being the instigators of mankind's first agricultural revolution. Many historians, though, caution against such grandiose claims, stressing the need for concrete archaeological evidence. The question of advanced technologies supposedly introduced by the Anunnaki further fuels the debate. Some proponents of the Anunnaki theories suggest that these beings possessed technology far beyond what we associate with ancient civilizations. They point to intricate architectural feats and sophisticated knowledge of astronomy as evidence. Yet, many academics counter that these achievements reflect the ingenuity and observational skills of our ancestors, not the intervention of otherworldly beings. The debates and controversies surrounding the Anunnaki underscore the importance of critical thinking and evidence in historical exploration. They remind us that while it's easy to get swept up in tantalizing theories, it's crucial to ground our understanding in verifiable facts. After all, history is as much about the mysteries we can't solve as it is about the truths we can uncover. Despite the controversies, the Anunnaki remain a fascinating topic for those interested in ancient history and mythology. Their story, whether steeped in fact or fiction, continues to captivate us, testament to the enduring allure of the unknown. What does the future hold for our understanding of the Anunnaki? This question remains as enigmatic as the Anunnaki themselves. As we delve deeper into the annals of history, the potential for new discoveries that could illuminate the Anunnaki's role in our past becomes a tantalizing prospect. Imagine unearthing an ancient artifact, perhaps a long-lost Sumerian tablet, that provides a clearer picture of these celestial beings. Such a discovery could completely revolutionize our understanding of early human civilizations. The Anunnaki, who were once just characters in ancient mythologies, could suddenly become pivotal figures in the story of human evolution. Beyond physical artifacts, there is also the promise of technological advancements. As we refine our methods of deciphering ancient languages and improve our ability to analyze archaeological finds using cutting-edge technology, we edge ever closer to the truth. The future, in this sense, holds the potential of drawing back the veil and revealing the Anunnaki in their true form. The field of archaeology is rife with possibilities. Around the globe, there are still countless sites yet to be explored and excavated. Each of these holds the potential to unlock more secrets about the Anunnaki, and with each passing year we are getting better at finding these hidden treasures. The use of satellite imagery and ground-penetrating radar is allowing us to locate and investigate archaeological sites like never before. Moreover, the ongoing research in the field of ancient Sumerian mythology continues to yield new insights. Scholars tirelessly decode and interpret ancient texts, hoping to gain a better understanding of the Anunnaki and their impact on early human societies. In this ceaseless pursuit of knowledge, the future holds untold possibilities. 
new archaeological discoveries, advancements in technology, and relentless scholarly research could all lead to a better understanding of the Anunnaki. As we continue to explore our ancient past, who knows what secrets we might uncover about the Anunnaki. Each day is a step towards unraveling the mysteries that shroud these enigmatic figures. Only time will tell what secrets lie in wait for us to discover. Why should we care about ancient myths like those of the Anunnaki? Well, let's dive into it. Ancient myths aren't just fanciful tales spun by our ancestors. They're complex narratives that serve as a mirror of the societies that created them. They reflect the values, fears, hopes, and the very essence of those cultures. The Anunnaki, for instance, were not just celestial beings in Mesopotamian mythology, they were symbols of power, knowledge, and mystery that reflected the worldview of ancient Sumerians. These myths provide us with a unique lens to view the past. They allow us to grasp the complexities and nuances of ancient societies. They reveal how these societies understood their world, their place in it, and the forces beyond their control. Through the tales of the Anunnaki, we can glean insights into the Sumerians' understanding of authority, divinity, and human potential. But the significance of ancient myths extends far beyond the historical. They're a fertile ground for the human imagination. They inspire literature, art, music, and even the way we perceive the universe. They challenge us to question, to dream, to wonder. They provoke thought and stir curiosity. They foster a sense of wonder and respect for the mysteries of existence. Moreover, these myths can offer valuable lessons. They remind us of the timeless human virtues and vices, the universal struggles and triumphs. The Anunnaki, with their divine wisdom and mortal follies, echo the duality inherent in human nature. Most importantly, understanding these myths can bring us closer to understanding ourselves. They shed light on our collective unconscious, our shared fears and aspirations, our common heritage. They remind us of our capacity for creativity, our thirst for knowledge, and our quest for meaning. In essence, these ancient narratives are not just relics of the past. They're vibrant threads in the tapestry of human history, culture, and consciousness. They're a testament to our shared human journey, our quest for understanding our longing for connection. Exploring ancient myths like those of the Anunnaki can offer us profound insights into our human journey. The Anunnaki, a mysterious group of deities from ancient Mesopotamia, continue to captivate our imagination. In our quest to unravel the enigma that is the Anunnaki, we've journeyed back to the cradle of civilization, ancient Mesopotamia. We've delved into the origins of these deities, exploring their depiction in age-old artifacts that stand as silent witnesses to a time long past. We've seen how the Anunnaki have been intricately woven into the tapestry of early human civilizations, their influence echoing through the ages. We've delved into their supposed advanced technologies, marveling at the knowledge and skills they reportedly possessed. A knowledge so advanced it's been the subject of heated debates, igniting controversies that push the boundaries of our understanding of history and technology. Theories abound, each more fascinating than the last, yet the truth remains elusive. And while the controversies rage on, we cannot ignore the significance of these ancient myths. They shape our interpretation of history, influence our culture, and feed our collective curiosity. The Anunnaki, with their blend of divine and technological prowess, serve as a poignant reminder of how mythology and history often intertwine, each informing the other in profound ways. As we look to the future, we can't help but anticipate the thrill of new archaeological discoveries that might shed light on these enigmatic figures. Each unearthed artifact, each deciphered tablet brings us one step closer to understanding the Anunnaki and their place in human history. The allure of ancient mysteries like the Anunnaki is enduring. They beckon us, inviting us to look beyond what we know, to question, to explore. 
They challenge us to unravel the threads of the past and weave them into a narrative that resonates with the present. It's a journey that is as enlightening as it is thrilling, and it's far from over. As we peel back the layers of history, the Anunnaki remain a testament to the enduring allure of ancient mysteries. Have you ever pondered what secrets the deep blue sea might be hiding? The ocean, vast and enigmatic, covers over 70% of our planet. Yet, it is said that we know more about the surface of the moon than the depths of our own oceans. Just imagine the immense possibilities and the untold stories that might be resting in the dark corners of the deep sea, waiting to be discovered. Underwater archaeology is an intriguing field that seeks to uncover these hidden stories. It's a discipline that combines the thrill of exploration with the intellectual rigor of historical research. At the intersection of scuba diving and archaeology, it plunges into the silent, submerged world to bring back tales of our past. Each dive is a leap back in time, each artifact collected, a fragment of a larger story. Underwater archaeologists delve into the ocean's depths, braving the unknown, driven by a thirst for knowledge and understanding. And sometimes what they find is nothing short of astounding. Imagine, if you will, the discovery of an entire city hidden beneath the waves, an ancient metropolis lost to time and the sea, its silent streets and abandoned edifices whispering tales of a time-long past. Such a discovery doesn't just add a chapter to our history books, it rewrites them. When we think of archaeology, we often picture desert sands and ancient ruins. But the ocean floors are a treasure trove of history too, holding secrets that can shed light on civilizations that have long disappeared. There's an entire world beneath the waves, a world that has witnessed the rise and fall of empires, the evolution of cultures, and the march of time. And within this world, there are still vast areas unexplored, holding the potential for future discoveries. Each dive is a step into the unknown, a voyage of discovery that can change our understanding of the past and our place in the world. Join us as we dive into the story of an astounding discovery that rewrites the pages of history. The year is 2000, and a group of marine archaeologists stumbles upon something extraordinary. In the vast expanse of the ocean, a team of dedicated divers is exploring the underwater depths. They're not hunting for treasure or seeking new species, but rather, they're on a mission to unlock the secrets of the past. Suddenly, their sonar pings with unexpected shapes emerging from the ocean floor. At first, it seems like a mere anomaly, a glitch, perhaps. But as they descend deeper, the truth begins to dawn. They've stumbled upon an entire city, hidden beneath the waves, untouched and unseen for centuries. The initial reaction is disbelief quickly replaced by a sense of wonder and excitement. The divers exchange glances, their eyes wide behind their masks. They've found something, something big. As they navigate through the underwater labyrinth, they start to realize the magnitude of their discovery. They see remnants of ancient structures, ornate carvings eroded by time but still discernible. They swim through arches and columns, past crumbling walls and courtyards that once echoed with the sounds of a vibrant civilization. Back on the surface, the news is met with a mix of skepticism and awe. But as the divers share their footage, the skepticism fades. The experts are called in, the historians and archaeologists, the men and women who've dedicated their lives to studying the past. They pore over the images, their faces lit with the glow of discovery. The underwater city is real, and it's spectacular. This isn't just a discovery, it's a time capsule, a snapshot of a forgotten era. The city tells a story of a civilization that lived, thrived, and ultimately vanished beneath the waves. The archaeologists are eager to learn its secrets, to piece together the puzzle of its past. As the sun sets, the team gazes out at the ocean, their minds filled with questions and theories. They've opened a door to the past, and they're only just beginning to step through. 
Little did they know they had just unearthed a lost piece of human history. As archaeologists began to explore the city, they were able to piece together its historical timeline. Delving into the heart of the city, they unearthed clues that painted a vivid picture of a vibrant civilization that once thrived here. The city, it appears, was a bustling metropolis during its prime, a focal point of trade, culture, and innovation. It was a city that was alive with the hum of daily life, where traders bartered in lively markets, scholars penned their thoughts in grand libraries, and artisans honed their craft in bustling workshops. Its inhabitants were a melting pot of cultures, each leaving their unique imprint on the city's character. They built grand temples, ornate palaces, and impressive public buildings, a testament to their architectural prowess. They were skilled artisans, their work ranging from intricate jewelry to masterful sculptures, each piece telling a story of its own. Yet, like all great civilizations, this city too had its twilight. A cataclysmic event, perhaps a massive earthquake or a devastating flood, brought about its sudden and tragic end. The city was lost to the depths, buried beneath layers of silt and sand, its glory forgotten for centuries. The city's historical era, as pieced together by archaeologists, provides a fascinating glimpse into a civilization that was advanced for its time, a society that valued art, culture, and knowledge. It's a reminder that our past is rich and complex, filled with stories of triumph and tragedy, of innovation and ingenuity. But more than that, it's a testament to human resilience. Despite the city's tragic fate, its legacy lives on through its remarkable architecture, its art, and the stories of its people. As we uncover more about this lost city, we gain a deeper understanding of our shared human history. We're reminded that civilizations rise and fall, but their stories endure, waiting to be discovered by those who dare to look beneath the surface. This underwater city is a time capsule, a direct link to our past. It's a testament to the enduring spirit of humanity, a silent witness to our collective journey through the ages. Beneath the sea, a world of architectural wonders awaited discovery. Imagine a city, frozen in time, its structures undisturbed by the passage of centuries, its secrets waiting patiently to be revealed. This is the reality of our underwater city, a testament to the architectural prowess of a civilization, long past. This city is not just a collection of buildings, it's a capsule of history, each structure speaking volumes about the society that once thrived here. The grandeur of the central plaza, for instance, indicates a society that valued community and public gatherings. The intricacy of the stone carvings found on the city walls reveals an appreciation for art and symbolism. The residences, with their distinct layouts and designs, tell tales of social hierarchy and familial traditions. Some homes bore the marks of wealth and status, adorned with elaborate decorations, while others were simpler, reflecting the lives of the common folk. Then, there are the temples. These sacred structures, often the most ornate and imposing of all, provide insight into the spiritual beliefs and practices of the people. The presence of multiple temples suggests a polytheistic society, with each deity perhaps associated with different aspects of life and nature. The city's infrastructure, too, is a marvel, the existence of well-planned streets and drainage systems speaks to a highly advanced understanding of urban planning and civil engineering. The city's builders knew how to work with their environment, channeling water from nearby rivers for their needs. Despite being submerged for centuries, the city's architectural integrity is astonishing. The stonework, the layout, the attention to detail all have withstood the test of time and the relentless pressure of the sea. This resilience is a testament to the skills and knowledge of the architects and builders of that era. As we continue to explore and study this underwater city, we can't help but marvel at the architectural ingenuity of our ancestors. 
The structures they left behind are not just remnants of a bygone era, but enduring symbols of human ingenuity and perseverance. These architectural wonders give us an unparalleled glimpse into the past. The exploration of the underwater city required cutting-edge technology and innovative techniques. To uncover the secrets of this submerged metropolis, archaeologists had to turn to the most advanced tools in their arsenal. The first step was to map the city's layout, and for this, sonar technology was indispensable. Sonar mapping allowed the team to create a detailed, three-dimensional image of the city, without disturbing a single grain of sand. It was like having a blueprint of a time-long past, providing an invaluable guide for the exploratory missions to come. Then came the challenge of delving into the city's depths. Human divers could only go so far, and for so long. So, remote-operated vehicles, or ROVs, became the explorers of choice. Equipped with high-resolution cameras and robotic arms, these ROVs could descend to the sea floor and navigate the city's ruins with precision. They could capture images of the city from angles a human diver could never achieve and retrieve artifacts with a delicacy that belies their mechanical nature. But technology didn't just aid in exploration, it also played a crucial role in the analysis of the artifacts. For instance, digital imaging technology helped archaeologists to decipher ancient inscriptions, revealing more about the city's history and culture. Advanced material analysis techniques gave insights into the city's trade connections and lifestyle of its inhabitants. The exploration and analysis of the city was a Herculean task that would have been impossible without these technological marvels. They allowed us to reach into the unknown, to touch a past that had been lost to time and the sea. Yet these technologies weren't just tools for discovery, they were also a means of preservation, the detailed sonar maps, the high-definition images, the digital records of the artifacts. These are all ways of preserving the city's heritage for future generations. They ensure that the city, though hidden beneath the waves, would never be lost again. With the help of technology, we can uncover secrets that have been hidden for centuries. And who knows what other secrets are waiting to be discovered in the depths of our oceans. With each technological advancement, we come one step closer to unearthing them. The field of underwater archaeology is not without its challenges. The vast and mysterious ocean depths present obstacles that are unique and demanding. Diving into the abyss, archaeologists face poor visibility, strong currents, and the pressure of deep waters. These factors often limit the time they can spend at a site, and the amount of work that can be accomplished in a single dive. Yet these challenges have not deterred the relentless pursuit of knowledge. Instead, they've spurred innovation and technological advancements. Underwater robots, known as remotely operated vehicles, or ROVs, have become an archaeologist's best friend. These machines, impervious to the pressures and dangers of deep-sea exploration can access areas impossible for humans. They've brought us closer to lost civilizations, capturing high-resolution images and data from the ocean floor. Sonar technology, too, has seen significant improvements. It now allows archaeologists to map underwater sites in detail before even getting their feet wet. It's like having a bird's-eye view of a city buried beneath the waves. And then there's the advancement of photogrammetry. This technique of taking measurements from photographs has revolutionized underwater archaeology. It enables the creation of precise, three-dimensional models of submerged structures and artifacts. These digital replicas offer valuable insights and can even be shared with the world, bringing the mysteries of the deep to your living room. But it's not all about technology. Advancements in training and methodology have also played a crucial role. Today's underwater archaeologists are not just divers, they're scientists, trained to meticulously document and preserve the sites they explore. They navigate the delicate balance between discovery and conservation, ensuring that our underwater heritage is not just found, but also protected. 
Indeed, the path of underwater archaeology is strewn with challenges. Yet, every hurdle faced has only served to propel the field forward, driving new innovations and refining techniques. And in this dance of discovery and innovation, every challenge is indeed an opportunity for growth and discovery. The discovery of this ancient city is just the beginning. As we delve deeper into the ocean's depths, we're continually rewriting the annals of history. With every sunken city we uncover, every artifact we retrieve, we gain a richer understanding of our past. The future of underwater exploration holds immense potential. As technology advances, we're able to venture into parts of the ocean that were previously inaccessible. Consider the autonomous underwater vehicles, the remotely operated submarines that can withstand the crushing pressure of the deep sea. These technological marvels are already revolutionizing the way we explore the underwater world. And let's not forget about the advancements in imaging technology. High-resolution sonar mapping, for instance, is allowing us to create detailed three-dimensional models of underwater sites. These models are invaluable tools for archaeologists, providing a detailed view of the ocean floor and revealing hidden structures that might otherwise remain unseen. It's an exciting time to be an underwater explorer. With the advent of virtual reality technologies, we're not just limited to observing the ocean from a distance. We're able to immerse ourselves in these underwater worlds, exploring ancient ruins and sunken ships as if we were physically there. But the future is not just about technology, it's also about collaboration. By working with local communities and governments, we're fostering a sense of shared ownership and responsibility for these underwater treasures. After all, preserving our underwater heritage is a task that falls on all of our shoulders. And so, as we look to the future, we can't help but wonder, what other secrets are waiting to be discovered? What other chapters of human history lie buried beneath the waves? With every new discovery, we're not just learning about our past, we're also paving the way for future generations of explorers. So let's keep pushing the boundaries. Let's keep diving deeper, exploring further, asking tougher questions. The ocean is vast, and its depths are full of mysteries waiting to be unraveled. Who knows what other secrets lie beneath the waves? Our underwater cultural heritage is a treasure trove of knowledge. This submerged history, resting silently beneath the waves, holds invaluable insights into human civilization. Just imagine the countless stories of human triumph, innovation, and resilience that lie within these underwater relics waiting to be discovered and shared with the world. Preserving this heritage is not merely a nod to our past, it's a bridge connecting us to our ancestors, a tangible link to the people who once walked the earth, built civilizations, and shaped the world as we know it. It's through these silent testimonies that we can truly appreciate the depth and richness of human history. But let's not forget that preserving underwater cultural heritage is a challenging endeavor. The sea, with its corrosive salt water and relentless currents, is a hostile environment for any structure, let alone ancient relics. It's a constant battle against nature's erosive forces. And yet, it's a battle worth fighting. Why, you may ask? Because these sunken cities, shipwrecks, and submerged settlements offer a unique perspective into the human narrative. They reveal how ancient societies adapted to changing climates, how they traded and interacted with other cultures, and how they innovated to overcome challenges. These insights are not only fascinating but also invaluable for anthropologists, historians, and climate scientists. Moreover, preserving our underwater heritage can inspire future generations. It can ignite curiosity, foster a sense of belonging, and instill respect for our shared history. It's an opportunity to create a legacy of knowledge, a treasure chest of wisdom for the humans of tomorrow. But to achieve this, we need more than goodwill. We need advanced technologies, skilled professionals, 
and most importantly, a shared commitment to safeguard our underwater heritage. We need to recognize that this submerged history is not just a part of the past, it's a part of us, an integral piece of our collective identity. Preserving our past is crucial to understanding our future. It's our duty to ensure that the stories, lessons, and wisdom from our ancestors continue to enlighten, inspire, and guide us as we navigate the uncharted waters of the future. The underwater world is a vast, uncharted territory waiting to be explored. It's a realm where silence reigns, where darkness and light dance in a mesmerizing ballet, and where history sleeps, buried under layers of sand and time. Imagine yourself as an underwater archaeologist. Each dive is a journey back in time, a search for clues hidden in the deep. Like a detective, you piece together fragments of the past, each artifact a key to unlocking a story that has been silent for centuries. The joy of discovery, the thrill of unearthing a forgotten city or a sunken ship, is an experience beyond compare. It's not just about finding objects, it's about connecting with our shared past, understanding our collective journey as a species. It's about realizing that the same currents that once carried ancient sailors now guide us in our quest for knowledge. So, what does it take to venture into this world of underwater archaeology? Curiosity first and foremost, a thirst for knowledge, a willingness to face challenges head on, and yes, a love for the sea and all its mysteries. But remember, the path is not always smooth. The sea guards its secrets well. The pressures are immense, quite literally. The conditions can be harsh, the visibility low, but as they say, no risk, no reward. Every challenge overcome is a victory, every discovery a testament to human perseverance. As we stand on the brink of new technological advancements, the potential for further discoveries is immense. With better equipment, improved techniques, and a growing interest in underwater archaeology, who knows what secrets we might unravel next. The underwater world is a vast canvas of history waiting to be explored. Every grain of sand, every coral reef, every sunken ship holds a story, and these stories are waiting for you. So, are you ready to answer the call? Ready to dive into the unknown? Ready to unearth the mysteries of the deep? Remember, every dive is a step into the past, a step closer to understanding our shared heritage. Dive into the unknown, and you might just uncover a piece of history. Today we've taken a journey beneath the waves, into a world frozen in time. We've delved into the mysteries of a lost ancient city, hidden from human eyes for centuries, only to be rediscovered in our time. This underwater city, with its magnificent architecture and rich cultural heritage, stands as a testament to the ingenuity and resilience of our ancestors. We have explored the historical era in which this splendid city thrived, gaining a deeper understanding of the lives of those who once walked its streets. From the architectural marvels we've uncovered, we've been given a glimpse into the sophistication of a civilization long gone, but not forgotten. We've also seen firsthand the advanced technologies that have made these underwater explorations possible. From cutting-edge sonar mapping systems to remotely operated vehicles, we're pushing the boundaries of what we can discover and learn from our past. This journey has not been without its challenges. The field of underwater archaeology is fraught with difficulties, from the physical constraints of operating beneath the surface to the delicate task of preserving artifacts. Yet, we're continually advancing, developing new techniques and technologies that allow us to overcome these hurdles. Looking ahead, the future of underwater exploration is bright. With each passing year, we're uncovering more about our underwater cultural heritage and gaining a richer understanding of human history. There's no telling what secrets still lie beneath the waves waiting to be discovered. The preservation of our underwater cultural heritage is not just about learning from the past. It's about preserving these stories for future generations so they too can appreciate the depth and breadth of human history. Thank you for joining us on this journey. Each discovery we make, each story we unearth, 
brings us closer to understanding our collective past. So let's continue to push the boundaries of exploration to delve deeper and uncover the hidden stories of our world. Don't forget to subscribe for more incredible history and archaeology facts. Until next time, keep exploring. Welcome to the land of pyramids, pharaohs, and the Nile, Egypt, a country with a rich and complex history. This is a land where time has left an indelible mark, where ancient monuments stand as silent witnesses to the rise and fall of great civilizations. In the cradle of the Nile, the stories of pharaohs and their grand pyramids were born. They ruled over the ancient Egyptian civilization, a civilization noted for its advancements in various fields, from architecture to medicine, astronomy to mathematics. Hieroglyphs etched on stone walls whisper tales of a time when gods and goddesses walked among men. Fast forward to the 7th century, and the winds of change swept across the land. The Islamic invasion introduced a new religious, cultural, and political landscape. The minarets replaced the pyramids as symbols of dominance, and Arabic, the language of the Quran, took root in the Egyptian soil. In the modern era, Egypt emerged as a key player on the world stage. Its strategic location, straddling the continents of Africa and Asia, and its control over the Suez Canal, a vital maritime route underscore its economic and political significance. Today, Egypt is recognized as a cultural, political, and economic powerhouse in the Middle East and beyond. Throughout its history, Egypt has welcomed many, but not all. Over the centuries, this ancient land has seen its share of bans, prohibitions that have shaped its international relations and domestic policies. These bans have been as complex and varied as the country's history, ranging from individuals to organizations for reasons political, religious, or otherwise. Now that we've set the historical stage, let's delve into the intriguing subject of those who've been banned from Egypt. Egypt's history of banning individuals and entities dates back to the early 20th century. The bans were primarily aimed at maintaining a strong political grip and ensuring national security. Intriguingly, the earliest bans were not solely against foreign entities, but also against local individuals who posed a threat to the ruling regime. In the early 1900s, Egypt was a British protectorate. Political dissent was growing and the nationalist movement was gaining momentum. The British administration, in collaboration with the Egyptian monarchy, imposed bans on several key nationalist leaders. These bans were aimed at quelling the rising tide of nationalism and maintaining the status quo. The reasons underlying these early bans were primarily political dissent and, to a lesser extent, espionage. One notable figure who faced such a ban was Sa'ad Zaglul, a prominent nationalist leader. Zaglul was exiled in 1919 for advocating for Egypt's independence, a move that sparked nationwide protests. The British eventually lifted the ban, but the incident set a precedent for how the Egyptian government would deal with dissent in the future. Another fascinating instance was the ban on the Muslim Brotherhood. Founded in 1928, the organization rapidly gained popularity for its social reform and nationalist agenda. However, the Brotherhood's increasing influence was viewed as a threat by the monarchy, leading to its ban in 1948. This ban marked the beginning of a long and tumultuous relationship between the Egyptian government and the Brotherhood, a relationship characterized by alternating periods of tolerance, persecution, and outright bans. The early bans in Egypt were not just about controlling dissent or curbing threats to national security. They were also about shaping the political landscape of the country. By banning certain individuals or groups, the Egyptian government sought to control the narrative and maintain its grip on power. As we move forward in time, the reasons for these bans become more diverse and complex. The political landscape changes, international relations evolve, and the reasons for imposing bans adapt accordingly. The intricate dance between power, politics, and bans continues. And it is this dance 
that we will continue to explore in the upcoming scenes. The Cold War era was a crucial period in Egypt's history, and it saw its fair share of bans. As the world was divided into two opposing blocks, Egypt found itself navigating the treacherous waters of international politics. During this tumultuous period, Egypt, under the leadership of Gamal Abdel Nasser, took a non-aligned stance in the global conflict. This decision was driven by a desire to maintain sovereignty and avoid becoming a pawn in the geopolitical chess game. But this didn't mean Egypt refrained from implementing bans. In the midst of this polarized world, certain individuals and organizations were deemed persona non grata. These bans were often politically motivated, as affiliations to either the capitalist West or the communist East could be perceived as a threat to Egypt's non-alignment policy. A notable instance was the Soviet Union's ban in the late 1950s. This was a direct result of Nasser's decision to recognize Communist Kina, a move that didn't sit well with the Soviets. This ban was lifted only after Nasser agreed to distance himself from China, illustrating the delicate dance of diplomacy during this era. On the other end of the spectrum, bans were also imposed on Western figures who were perceived to be advocating for capitalist ideologies. This was part of Egypt's effort to maintain a neutral stance and avoid being swayed by either side of the Cold War divide. These decisions were not made lightly. They were the result of careful deliberation, taking into account the intricate web of international relations. Egypt was not just banning individuals or organizations. It was making a statement about its position in the global arena. The bans during the Cold War era were a testament to Egypt's commitment to its non-alignment policy. They were a reflection of the complexities of international politics and the delicate balancing act countries had to perform in this period. As international relations evolved, so did Egypt's stance on who could enter its borders. This evolution was not only a testament to changing global dynamics, but also a reflection of Egypt's maturing approach to diplomacy and international politics. From the fall of the Berlin Wall to the dawn of the new millennium, Egypt's policies continued to change. As the world witnessed the end of the Cold War, Egypt too was evolving its diplomatic strategies. Let's delve into this transformative period, shall we? In the post-Cold War era, Egypt, like many other nations, was reshaping its international relationships. The focus was on a new world order, with a shift from ideological battles to economic and political alliances. As part of this transformation, Egypt had to make some tough decisions, including banning certain individuals and organizations. One of the most notable figures banned during this period was Noam Chomsky, a renowned linguist and political activist. His outspoken criticism of Egypt's human rights issues and political repression led to his ban in the mid-90s. He became a symbol of Egypt's intolerance for dissenting voices, even those from international intellectuals. In the same vein, Amnesty International, a global human rights organization, was also banned in the late 90s. The organization's reports on human rights abuses in Egypt didn't sit well with the government. The ban represented a broader trend of Egypt clamping down on international organizations critical of its policies. As we moved into the 21st century, the digital age brought new challenges. Egypt began to ban websites and online platforms that it perceived as threats to national security or social stability. This move reflected a global trend where countries sought to control the Internet within their borders. However, these decisions were not without consequences. They sparked international debates about freedom of speech and expression and human rights. Egypt, once a beacon of civilization, was now under scrutiny for its restrictive policies. These bans also had significant implications for Egypt's relationships with other nations. Countries that held freedom of speech and human rights in high esteem started questioning their alliances with Egypt. 
the stage was set for a new era of diplomatic challenges and changes. The 21st century brought about its own unique set of challenges and changes. This period was a testament to the ever-evolving landscape of international politics and the role Egypt played in it. As we journey forward, we'll explore the 21st century bans and their impact on international relations. In the 21st century, the reasons for being banned from Egypt became more varied than ever before. This era saw a shift in the types of bans imposed, with an increasing focus on issues related to terrorism, political activism, and human rights. Take a moment to consider the backdrop of the new millennium. The world was changing rapidly, and so too were the dynamics of international politics. The rise of global terrorism, the spread of democratic ideals, and a heightened focus on human rights propelled Egypt to recess its stance on who it allowed within its borders. Now, let's delve into the bans related to terrorism. After the tragic events that unfolded on September 11, 2001, nations worldwide, including Egypt, tightened their security measures. Individuals or organizations with even a hint of links to terrorist activities found themselves unwelcome. This was a move aimed at ensuring national security, yet it wasn't without controversy as questions of civil liberties and racial profiling arose. Next, we move to the bans connected to political activism. In the wake of the Arab Spring, a wave of political unrest that swept across the Middle East in 2011 Egypt found itself in the throes of revolution. Activists, both local and foreign, who were seen as threats to the status quo were often banned, their voices silenced. This move, while consolidating power for some, also bred resentment and further political tension. Lastly, we focus on the bans associated with human rights issues. In the face of increasing international scrutiny, Egypt has banned individuals and organizations advocating for human rights, often under the guise of national security. It's a delicate balancing act, where the pursuit of security can sometimes overshadow the pursuit of justice. These bans have not only affected those who were banned, but also had significant implications on international relations. As we navigate the complexities of this 21st century world, Understanding these bans offers a glimpse into the intricate tapestry of global politics and diplomacy. The bans imposed by Egypt have often sent ripples through the world of international politics. The influence of these bans extends far beyond the borders of the ancient land of pyramids, shaping the dynamics of global diplomacy. Let's delve into the heart of the matter. When a country like Egypt bars an individual, organization, or even another nation from its territory, it's not just about restricting physical access. It's a statement, a powerful tool in the realm of international relations. These bans have triggered diplomatic tensions, strained alliances, and even influenced the course of significant international events. Take, for instance, the bans during the Cold War era. They were not merely a reflection of Egypt's internal policies, but also a manifestation of the global ideological divide. These bans were often met with reciprocal actions, creating a domino effect that further heightened tensions between blocks of nations. Then, there were the bans of the 21st century, which were largely driven by issues of terrorism and human rights. These bans put Egypt in the global spotlight, sparking debates and discussions in international forums. Some nations rallied in support, while others voiced strong oppositioun, affecting Egypt's diplomatic relations on multiple fronts. However, it's not all about conflict. These bans have also paved the way for potential diplomatic resolutions. The complex dance of international politics often involves negotiations and compromises. In some cases, the lifting of bans has marked the beginning of new diplomatic relations, symbolizing a fresh start and a step towards mutual understanding. The impact of these bans on international relations is profound and far-reaching. 
They shape the way nations interact with each other, influencing global power dynamics and altering the course of history. Understanding these dynamics is crucial to comprehend the complexities of international politics. As we look towards the future, the question remains, what will be the future of these bands in Egypt? In the realm of international politics, predicting the future is akin to forecasting the weather in a storm. However, based on historical trends and the current geopolitical climate, we can envisage a few potential scenarios. One possibility is that Egypt could continue its current course, implementing bans as a tool to maintain internal stability and uphold its national interests. This approach, while effective in the short term, could potentially isolate Egypt from the global community in the long term, straining international relations and impacting its global standing. On the other hand, Egypt could also consider revising its policies, adopting a more diplomatic approach towards those who have been banned. This might involve negotiations and discussions with other nations, international organizations, or even the individuals themselves. Such a shift would require a delicate balancing act ensuring national security while fostering a more open and inclusive atmosphere. The role of international diplomacy here cannot be overstated. Diplomatic efforts could help to mediate these bans, encouraging dialogue and understanding between Egypt and those affected. This could lead to the lifting of certain bans, or at least the implementation of more nuanced measures that take into account the complexities of international politics. There's also the potential for change driven by external factors. For instance, global events or shifts in the geopolitical landscape could influence Egypt's stance. Changes in leadership both within Egypt and in other nations could also have a significant impact on these policies. However, it's crucial to note that these scenarios are merely hypotheses and the actual future may well be a blend of these possibilities or something entirely different. As with all matters in international politics, the road ahead is uncertain and fraught with complexity. Only time will tell how Egypt's policies and international politics will shape the future of these bands. From the early 20th century to the present day, Egypt's history of bands is a fascinating study of international politics. We've journeyed through a century of bands, highlighting notable figures and organizations that found themselves barred from the land of the pyramids for reasons as diverse as the figures themselves. We began with the early bands, a period marked by political turbulence and the burgeoning influence of international relations. The Cold War era brought its own set of challenges, with bans reflecting the global tension and ideological divides of the time. As we moved into the post-Cold War and 21st century, the bans became increasingly complex, influenced by factors such as terrorism, human rights issues, and diplomatic disputes. The impact of these bans on international relations cannot be overstated. Each ban is a statement, a message sent out to the world. They constrain diplomatic relations, shape international policies, and even alter the course of history. Yet they also provide an opportunity for dialogue, negotiation, and ultimately, resolution. Looking ahead, the future of bans in Egypt remains uncertain. As we've seen throughout this exploration, bans are not static. They evolve with the political climate, reflecting shifts in power, ideology, and global dynamics. The potential for diplomatic resolutions exists, but it's a path fraught with challenges and complexities. In this journey through Egypt's history of bans, we've seen how international politics is not just about diplomatic meetings and treaties. It's a complex and ever-changing world where every ban, every decision, every negotiation has far-reaching implications. Understanding these bans is not just about who can't enter Egypt, it's about understanding this complex and ever-changing world of international politics. It's about recognizing the power of diplomacy, the importance of dialogue, and the role each of us plays in this global community. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to subscribe for more insightful geopolitical facts.
Imagine living closer to the sky than anyone else on Earth. Welcome to La Rinconada, the highest inhabited place on the planet. Nestled in the rugged terrain of the Peruvian Andes, this town sits at an elevation exceeding 5,000 meters. For a little perspective, that's more than three times the height of Mount Olympus, the legendary home of the Greek gods. La Rinconada's geographical uniqueness doesn't stop at its high altitude. Its isolation, tucked away in the remote peaks of the Andes, adds an extra layer to its charm and challenge. The nearest city, Juliaca, is a grueling journey away, and the town is inaccessible by road for several months of the year due to harsh weather conditions. Speaking of weather, La Rinconada is a place of extremes. Temperatures can plunge below freezing, and the thin air at such high altitudes can make it difficult to breathe. Yet, despite these challenging conditions, the town is home to tens of thousands of people, a testament to human resilience and adaptability. Often referred to as the roof of the world, La Rinconada stands as a beacon, quite literally above all else. It's a place where the sky is not the limit, but rather the daily view. The town's unique position also poses unique challenges, from the scarcity of oxygen to the limited access to basic amenities to the harsh living conditions. But it's also a place of incredible beauty, with panoramic views of snow-capped mountains and clear blue skies that stretch as far as the eye can see. Now that you know where La Rinconada is, Let's delve into its unique history, from its establishment in the 60s to the gold rush that spurred its growth to the modern challenges it faces today, La Rinconada's story is as fascinating as its geography. But that's a tale for the next scene. So stay tuned as we take you on a journey to the highest inhabited place on Earth. The story of La Rinconada begins in the mid-20th century. Nestled within the snow-capped peaks of Peru's Puno region, this unique town came into existence around the 1950s. Initially, it was nothing more than a small mining camp, a spot of human activity against the stark, icy wilderness. It was a place where only the hardiest could survive, let alone thrive. The landscape around La Rinconada is as harsh as it is beautiful. The air is thin, the temperatures are extreme, and the terrain is rugged. Yet there was something in this desolate place that sparked the interest of those brave enough to venture here. That something was gold. As word spread about the discovery of gold in the area, people from all walks of life and different parts of the country began to trickle into La Rinconada. They came with dreams of striking it rich, lured by the promise of gold. The small mining camp began to swell, growing steadily as more and more people arrived. What started as a handful of miners and their families quickly turned into a bustling community. Tents and makeshift shelters gradually gave way to more permanent structures. Homes, shops, and even a school sprang up as the camp transformed into a town. With the population surge, La Rinconada also faced growing pains. The infrastructure struggled to keep up with the rapid growth, and the town grappled with the challenges of providing basic services in such a remote and harsh environment. Yet, the people of La Rinconada persevered, their resilience as strong as the mountains that surrounded them. Today, La Rinconada stands as a testament to human tenacity and the allure of gold. It's a town that has flourished against all odds, a town that has etched its place on the world map, not just as the highest inhabited place on Earth, but also as a symbol of human determination and ambition. From a small mining camp, La Rinconada grew into a town, all thanks to the lure of gold. The promise of gold can lead people to the most inhospitable places, this has been the case throughout human history, and La Rinconada is no exception. In the mid-20th century, a gold rush kicked off in this remote corner of the world, sparking a period of rapid population growth that would forever change this high-altitude town. Gold, that elusive and precious metal, was discovered in the area around the mid-20th century. It's hard to imagine that such a remote and extreme location could hold such a treasure. 
but it did, and when word got out, it was like a beacon, attracting prospectors and miners from all over Peru and even further afield. The population of La Rinconada exploded. In a matter of decades, it went from being a small, almost forgotten outpost to a bustling town of several tens of thousands. People came in droves, all chasing the dream of striking it rich. They came with hope in their hearts, ready to endure the hardships of life at high altitude for the chance to find gold. But with this sudden influx came a host of problems. Infrastructure struggled to keep up with the rapid growth. There was a lack of housing, sanitation, and basic services. The town had no sewage system or running water, and waste started piling up. Electricity was scarce and unreliable. The growing community was essentially living in a state of survival, battling the harsh conditions while dreaming of gold. The pressure on the environment was immense. The once pristine landscapes around La Rinconada were transformed, scarred by the relentless search for gold. Rivers were polluted with mercury, used in the gold extraction process endangering both the local ecosystem and the health of the miners and their families. And yet, despite these challenges, the people of La Rinconada persevered. They built makeshift homes, started small businesses, and made the best of the situation. They adapted to the harsh realities of life at the world's highest inhabited place, all in the pursuit of gold. They embodied the human spirit in its rawest form, resilient, determined, and unyielding. But the gold rush also brought about a sense of community. People banded together, helping each other in times of need. They shared resources, knowledge, and skills. They celebrated together when someone struck gold and supported each other when times were tough. In a place where life can be incredibly challenging, community became their lifeline. Today, the legacy of the gold rush is still very much alive in La Rinconada. The town continues to grow and evolve, facing new challenges along the way. But through it all, the spirit of the gold rush, the resilience, the determination, the sense of community remains. The gold rush brought prosperity, but also a host of problems. Yet, it also brought about a sense of resilience and community that continues to define La Rinconada today. This high-altitude town, the closest inhabited place to the sky on Earth, stands as a testament to human adaptability and the timeless allure of gold. Today, La Rinconada is a town teetering on the edge, a place where the sky's the limit, quite literally, and the challenges are as colossal as the mountains that surround it. It's not just the altitude that takes your breath away, but the resilience of the inhabitants who call this place home. The town's modern life is a high-stakes gamble, with its economy almost entirely dependent on gold mining. This is a world where fortunes are made and lost in the blink of an eye, where the glitter of gold often outshines the harsh realities of life. The volatile nature of the mining industry combined with the lack of other viable economic options, puts the town in a precarious position. One downturn in the global gold market can spell disaster for the entire community. Yet the challenges don't stop at economic instability. Environmental degradation is a significant concern. The unregulated gold mining has left its mark on the pristine Andean landscapes leading to deforestation and contamination of water sources. The use of mercury in gold processing poses a further risk, with the toxic metals seeping into the environment and the food chain, with potentially devastating effects on human health and the surrounding ecosystem. High-altitude living also brings its own set of health issues. The thin air, with its reduced oxygen levels, can lead to chronic mountain sickness, Symptoms include headaches, dizziness, and shortness of breath. The lack of medical facilities and professionals in the town exacerbates these health concerns, leaving many residents without access to necessary health care. Moreover, the town's isolation and inaccessibility mean basic amenities that most of us take for granted are luxuries here. 
there's no proper sewage system, waste disposal facilities are scarce, and access to clean drinking water is limited. The education system is rudimentary at best, with few schools and limited resources. The digital divide is starkly visible here with limited access to the internet and modern communication tools. Yet, it's not all doom and gloom. The people of La Rinconada are no strangers to adversity. They've carved out a living in this harsh terrain, demonstrating an indomitable spirit that refuses to be beaten by circumstances. They're resourceful, resilient, and above all, hopeful. They're constantly seeking ways to improve their lives, whether it's through sustainable mining practices, community-led initiatives for education and health care, or advocating for better infrastructure and services. In many ways, La Rinconada is a microcosm of the challenges we face globally, environmental degradation, economic instability, and social inequality. It's a stark reminder of the need for sustainable development, equitable resource distribution, and resilient communities. Despite these challenges, the people of La Rinconada continue to live and work in this unique place. They're a testament to human resilience and adaptability, a beacon of hope shining brightly against the backdrop of the towering Andes, reminding us that even in the harshest of environments, life finds a way. Life in La Rinconada is hard but the spirit of its people is harder. Imagine waking up each morning, 5,200 meters above sea level, in an environment so harsh, it's almost inhospitable. The air is thin, the weather is unpredictable, and the work is perilous. Yet in this remote corner of Peru, thousands of people call La Rinconada home. Behind every door in this highest city in the world, there's an inspiring story of resilience and tenacity. Take Maria, for instance, a mother of three who runs a small grocery store. Each day she faces the cold, the altitude, and the isolation, but she remains undeterred. She's not just surviving, she's thriving, providing for her family and contributing to her community. Then there's Carlos, a miner who spends long hours in the icy tunnels, extracting gold. Every day he risks his life, knowing well that the mine could collapse at any moment. Yet he doesn't waver. He's there, day in, day out, driven by the hope of a better future for his family. And let's not forget the children of La Rinconada. Despite the hardships, they play, they laugh, they go to school and they dream. They dream of a day when their town will be more than just a gold mine, a day when they'll have access to better health care, education, and opportunities. The spirit of La Rinconeda is a beacon of human resilience. It's a story of people who, despite living in one of the most extreme environments on Earth, refuse to give up. They face each day with courage, determination, and hope. Their spirit is a testament to the adaptability of humans, to our ability to endure, to strive, and to thrive, no matter the circumstances. In the face of adversity, the people of La Rinconada do not just endure, they rise above. They don't merely survive, they thrive. And in doing so, they remind us of the indomitable human spirit. The story of La Rinconada is a testament to human resilience in the face of extreme conditions as we conclude our journey to the highest inhabited place on Earth. Let's summarize what we've learned. The town of La Rinconada, perched high in the Peruvian Andes, is a testament to human adaptability. Its unique geographical position, closer to the sky than any other inhabited place, presents unparalleled challenges and breathtaking beauty. La Rinconada's establishment and growth are intricately tied to the lure of gold. From a modest settlement, it has grown into a bustling town, with the promise of riches drawing people from far and wide. Yet this growth has not come without its challenges. Extreme weather conditions, isolation, and a lack of basic infrastructure are daily realities for its inhabitants. Despite these hardships, the spirit of La Rinconada is unbroken. The town stands as a symbol of endurance and resilience, a beacon of human ambition in the face of adversity. From its gold rush heritage to its present-day struggles, 
La Rinconada serves as a powerful reminder of human ambition and resilience. Thank you for joining us on this fascinating journey to La Rinconada. If you've enjoyed peeling back the layers of this unique town's history and culture, consider subscribing to our channel. We have a vast array of insightful content just waiting to be discovered. And don't forget to share this video with others who might appreciate an intriguing peek into humanity's resilience and adaptability. Until next time, keep exploring, keep learning, and keep being amazed by our incredible world.